Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a new toy for you. A Metal Stay Armory 10.5 inch pistol build kit. I'm a fan of Palmetto State Armory. I think what they offer for the price point, pre-COVID, and even up until about a month ago, is reasonable. It was a complete buyer's market prior to COVID, so we saw ast astronomically low prices in the gun industry. And this particular kit here ran for $309. 11 months ago, 10 months ago. Which is a phenomenal, phenomenal deal. The lowers, you could have got for $49.99. You know, so for $360, you know, minus your your taxes, and taxes, shipping, and uh, your transfer fee, you had a pistol build kit. Or... Uh, a rifle, full-length rifle, if you went that route. Unfortunately, COVID kind of screwed up everything, and we're here dealing with what, what we have available. So, to get the pricing out of the way, uh, I bought this kit last week, the day after the election. This upper, or this pistol build kit, Ran me $529.99. Mind you, prior to COVID, they were $309.99. If you went with the non MOE, they were $299.99. I checked today prior to making this video, and these kits are going for $669.99. That's a $140 jump in a week. So, <clears throat> would I pay that much for this? No. Did I want to pay the five thirty nine ninety nine or five twenty nine ninety nine? Not really. But in a week's time, it went from five hundred nine to five twenty nine ninety nine. Two weeks prior to that, it was four ninety nine ninety nine, and it just incrementally jumped by the week. With the results of the election, even though the election is not officially done yet, but being that it looks more likely like Biden's going to be the next president, it was only a matter of time before they started jumping. But to be honest, I'm surprised the next day they didn't jump up to that price. But that is what it is. The lower receiver is also a PSA. Which I'll get into that in a little bit. But it's their M4A1. They didn't have their regular uh, Palmetto State lower. Which is fine because I actually wanted this for a long time. Uh, and I think these were always kind of around the $89.99 price point. Maybe a little bit less. But uh, I paid $89.99 last week when I ordered my pistol belt kit. Because I, I bought it all at the same time. Prior to this video I checked. They're going for $109.99. So again, prices are jumping, unfortunately, as demand becomes more uh, prevalent as if it wasn't already, prices are going to get, continue to jump up because now manufacturers have to pay for the extra man hours, they have to pay for the, the renewal of tooling, uh, they just have to pay for a lot to meet the demands of the consumer. And with that comes increased costs. So whether that's what's driving this type of a jump, that's another thing. But unfortunately, this is the situation that we're in. So I've spent enough on that soapbox right there. So let's get into this review. Uh, it's just a preliminary review. I haven't done any... Uh, real testing as far as reliability and stuff and that's probably not going to happen for a very long time ammo is way too expensive and what i do have i don't want to touch period unless i absolutely have to so let's jump into this so it's a 10.5 carving length pistol build kit with the moe furniture and sba3 stock or not stock i'm sorry bricks 
So that's what it is. It's not a stop. We'll start from the front and work our way rearward. So on the front, you have an A2 style flash hider, birdcage as it's most commonly known as. And attached, it's attached to their Palmetto State Armory's barrel, which is chambered in 5.56 NATO and is 1.7 twist with a phosphate coating. This particular barrel is carbon length, so the gas tube is carbon length. The gas block is your, your A2 style gas block, or A1 style gas block, I can't remember it. It's almost 2 o'clock in the morning, so excuse me if I, if I screw up on anything. Um, but it is F marked. The handguard is the Magpul MOE, which the rest of the furniture on here will be aside from the, the brace. Moving rearward, I check everything that I get. Anytime I get something, I completely tear it down and check it. Now, I didn't completely tear it down, but I did check to see what, how well it was torqued, the, the barrel nut, and it was it was torqued pretty tight. And anybody who's ever messed with any of the PSA products, especially their uppers, their, their um, barrel nuts are a pain in the ass to break loose. So, but... I always check it, doesn't matter. Don't, there's only one company that I don't feel the need to check, and that's LWRC, but that's because they everything is they're they're they have some of the best quality control in the business. I'd say them and BCM. But personal opinion, moving on. A receiver set, upper receiver is A3 style. And it's 7075 T6 aluminum. It's hard coat anodized. And it is just it is mil spec. The lower, same thing, 7075 T6 aluminum, hard coat anodized, and it is mil spec. Now this one is the M4A1 lower. And I wanted this because eventually I think I haven't fully decided because it's hard to justify the $200. But I think that I may SBR this and do a SOP mod clone with this. Unless, unless the prices come back down and then I'll get another lower and just do a completely different build. Uh, which that'll be its own thing on the, on the side. Now, the pistol kit comes with everything uh, besides the lower. So you have your upper receiver, you got your furniture, you got your charging handle, which is also 775 T6 aluminum and uh, hard coat anodized. Has your, your BCG, buffer tube, buffer weight, buffer spring, whole nine yards. And the really nice thing about PSA is everything is individually wrapped by what it is. So the trigger assembly, individually wrapped. The uh, safety selector, individually wrapped. Everything's individually wrapped so that you know what springs, what detents, what everything you're doing goes with that and nothing gets mixed up. Now after a while of doing them, you'll know right off the bat, like okay, that's a you know, that's a uh takedown detent and spring or you know selector detent and spring. But for somebody who's new who's never built it, that is awesome because I've gotten some kits where everything's just kind of thrown into one bag and you got to sort it all out. And it's a pain in the ass, especially if you're new at it. Um, so, as you can see, it's locked back. There's nothing in there. Empty mag, P mag. Uh, so, basic MOE pistol grip. I like the, the, the Magpul MOE grips. I have a couple variants, and they all feel the same. The only one I don't have is the K2, which has more of a vertical and it has this uh, like rubberized feeling. I don't like the rubberized because when you start to sweat or your hands get wet, it gets slip like slick and slippery, and I'm not a big fan of it. Um, so that I, whether I'm going to keep this on here or not is a whole other thing. If I go with the SOP mod build, then I'll have to go back to uh, an A2 style. So uh, what else we got? We'll cover the... Uh, The BCG. So, 
This is their basic BCG. It is full auto profile and it is phosphate coated. It says that the bolt is uh, is MP. I don't know if you can see that, but it says it's MPI tested. I don't know if it's HP tested. I would imagine that they would HP they would high pressure test it when they fire it and then do the magnetic particle inspection because if you don't do the magnetic if you don't do that and then do the magnetic particle inspection you're kind of negating the purpose of the test like you you can see if there's any issues off the manufacturing line but you can have something that's fine off the manufacturing line and if it doesn't meet the requirements after you high pressure test it with that proof round then you're you're not gonna uh you're not going to see anything so you know or you may have something develop after even though if you magnetic particle inspect it prior to there won't be anything wrong so uh the one thing that's pretty good i i, I think there's kind of overlooked is how well the staking is now their gas key is hardened to usgi spec and they use grade a bolts bolts grade a is the hardness there's different levels but grade a is a great eight is typically what you'll find and they're staked very well Let's see if you can see that now the staking looks like it, like they might use a, a hydraulic tool to stake it kind of like the way bcm does theirs but uh firing pins generic bolts generic now on the inside it's not uh chrome line like you would see on a on a mil spec bolt it's just phosphate coated. So I don't know if that's going to create any issues down the road. It seems to work just fine. But it's not as smooth as a chrome line or mil spec BCG. I don't think that's going to be an issue. But uh, only time will tell. So let's see. So the, the bolt is made out of Carpenter 158 steel. And... I believe the bolt is too. Yeah. So now Palmetto State Armory makes their barrels and their receivers. Now I had heard a while back that Aero Precision was making their receivers. I don't know if that's true. I also read somewhere. Uh, I don't know if it was true. I know it's not true anymore. I know that there was a point in time where FN they were getting their their receivers from FN maybe that was back in the day when they first started uh, I don't think that to be true anymore based on an uh, article that I read from Amoland written by Patrick Roberts on November 2018 uh, DC machine is who makes their receivers and their barrels the PSA barrels and receivers uh, I don't know who else DC Machine actually does work for, but I know that that's who makes their receivers and their barrels. So, so I, I do want to touch on something real quick. For those that are interested in the M4A1 lower receivers, there's two different prefixes. There's a, a, a W prefix and I believe a Y prefix. The Y prefix, if I'm correct, is for the FN, and the W is for Colt. Now, these come with the W prefix. The cool thing about the W prefix is if you're trying to build a clone correct M4, M4A1, these are clone correct from 95 to, two, uh, to 2003. So anything that you're trying to that you're trying to clone that was made and in service from 2000 from 1995 to 2003 the w prefix is going to be what you want so this is really good um and it is marked safe semi and auto now when i was in the service back in 04 to 07 that was not auto it was burst so we had safe semi and three round burst now, I guess that was the original a, the M4s, and then when they transitioned to the M4A1s, they went back to auto. Uh, 
I don't know how long after I got on the service or whether it even got that far. Um, I can't tell you, but all I know is that this is correct for that error. So if you're looking to build something off of this lower, that's the rate, the route you want to go. Uh, so in this, I didn't put the regular trigger that came with it. The triggers are all phosphate coated. It's not their um, the nickel boron plated trigger, their enhanced trigger, which would be similar to um, what's that one company that Geisley's wife's company. I, I forget, but I have one on my wife's uh, BCM, and it's still heavy, but it's very smooth. Has a uh, crisp let off, crisp reset, you know, and it's very smooth all the way through. You don't have any any grit or any binding or staging. I took an air precision low, uh, trigger that I had that I had previously polished and did a little bit of work on the trigger before it was coming out to like seven pounds. It was absolutely atrocious. Now this trigger comes in even at five pounds and it's predictable. It's clean. There's no stagey or grittiness. Um, so this is much better. Now that the PSA, I'll probably end up doing some work too for another rifle down the road if I ever get to it. And maybe using that after it's polished with the JP Enterprises uh, spring kit, which will reduce it to three and a half pounds. But I'm very happy with this trigger. Uh, I took it to the range today to sight it in. And it shot well. It's very accurate with Fiocchi M193 ball ammunition at 50 yards. I, I, mind you, that is with an astigmatism and a red dot, no magnification. I was getting about an inch group. So take that for what it is. If I had magnification, I know I would tighten that up. But an inch at 50 yards, just a, a red dot. I think is plenty good good enough as far as the accuracy goes. I did notice that it's overgassed. Now it has the regular carbon weight buffer in there, and it was ejecting the rounds at the one o'clock position. I had a Pelican case on the table, about a foot away from from the rifle because I didn't have a whole lot of room and it was completely missing the, the case and shooting out at the one o'clock position. Now I had another rifle there with me that has an H2 buffer. I put the H2 buffer and it tamed down the recoil a bit and it was shooting more around at the two o'clock between two and two thirty, consistently. So that's much better. I may end up getting an H3 buffer to see how that goes, but these are definitely overgassed and I'm okay with with it being over gas because then you get you may get some increased wear over time but you're going to get increased reliability because it, it that over gas is going to force that bolt to to cycle like it like it would normally would kind of how the ak's are ak's are, are known to be super reliable well they're super reliable for two reasons one they have really loose tolerances so all that gunk dirt and, and grime that gets in there has places to go whereas the AR-15 has got a lot tighter tolerances which doesn't make it not reliable it actually helps to its reliability because it keeps things out but with the AK you have looser tolerances and AKs are ridiculously over -gassed. so those two things combined that's why they run the way they run but the ARs are plenty reliable. There's been plenty of videos done on YouTube showing what the AR can 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 go through. You had in-range TV that there's uh, donut in mud and whole nine yards. There was Texas planking that beat the hell out of a PSA upper um, or PSA rifle, and it just kept going. You have uh, Tim at the Military Arms Channel. He did a, his review on a BCM rifle that he ran for thousands of rounds without cleaning and it's still going uh, I don't even remember the last round count maybe 3,000 rounds or so so 
ARs are reliable. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If they're not, if they, your AR isn't reliable, it's because it probably wasn't built right. Um, but getting back to this, uh, is there anything else that I missed? I don't think I missed anything else. So let me put this back in. Now, do I recommend this? Absolutely. If you're on a budget and you're looking for, for an entry-level pistol or entry-level rifle, I think PSAs are a great option. There are other people that ha haven't had the best of experience with PSA, and it's a shame because all of my experiences with PSA have been great. I've never had any issues with PSA. Um, and everybody that I know is that, that I know that does have PSA rifles or PSA products haven't had any issues. Now PSA sells a crap ton of rifles and pistols, so you're going to see a lot higher numbers of people with issues. But if you compare it to the amount of products that they've sold, I don't think that. It's, it's an issue. I think it's a very small percentage. It just seems like a lot because so many rifles are being sold. But, uh, yeah, this is my build. Uh, for those that see this, yes, I did get my Odin. No, it's not the correct color. Not the, the desert tan that I originally had. I have a video out on that already. If you haven't seen it, you can go back and check that video out. And it'll give you all the the inside scoop on what happened with my customer service um, process and how I ended up with a black one and not a desert tan one. So this is my overview of my PSA 10 and a half inch carbine pistol build. I love it. It's comfortable. It's small. It's light. And uh, it just looks sexy. I'll look sexier with a SD with a uh, SOP mod stock or a B5 stock, but uh, maybe one day, one day I'll SBR it if I can muster up the courage to spend two hundred dollars to put a stock on it. But anyway, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I always respond uh, unless it's just a stupid comment, and then I won't. I just won't even waste my time. But uh, yeah. Any constructive criticism, you're more than welcome to leave them down in the comments below. And uh, I will catch you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.